Alright, here we go. So see if you can set it up. Opposite squared equals adjacent squared plus adjacent squared minus 2 times adjacent times adjacent times cosine of the angle. Yes, you have to be, so it's either adjacent 1 or adjacent 2. I have learned to put adjacent and adjacent, but you have to use both. Yes, yeah, so you have to use the 12 and the 13. I mean, like, where do you put, like, does it matter, like, you put the adjacent 1 into, like, the adjacent squared, or you can put them in one of each? Right, so it doesn't matter which one. So you could go 12 squared plus 13 squared, or 13 squared plus 12 squared, it doesn't matter. And 12 times 13, or if the case was 12. But I mean, you have to have, like, one in each spot. Right, and you have to have side angle side. So you must have side angle side. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That's what you're asking, Marvin. Mm -hmm. I should listen there. So you have to have, you must have, so you must have, you must know side angle side. Thank you, Lauren. I needed to write that down. Thank you. So I should have C squared equals 12 squared plus 13 squared minus 2 times 12 times 13 times the cosine of 54 degrees. Okay, thumbs up. Are you happy with that? Okay. It's actually really easy. I mean, I mean, I say that. I know I'm a math guy. I've been doing this forever. But I believe for kids, for high school kids, this is not a hard formula. It's just long. So we're just going to go 12 squared plus... 13 squared minus 2 times 12 times 13 times the cosine of 54 degrees. Okay, 129.6. And then, of course, what am I going to do? Square root it, square root it. Square root that answer. And I got a third, about 11.4. 11.38, 11.38. Okay, centimeters. Okay, let me see. Thumbs up. Everybody get it? Thumbs up. Everybody get it? Okay. Oh, good. Okay, now, find the measure of angle R. So there's a second formula that we're going to write. Okay, the second formula is this. So to find an, an angle, we'll go back up to this form. Okay, so if we want to find the angle. Okay, we're going to take our formula, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, and we're just going to rewrite it. So what I'm going to do is bring the adjacent squared over, adjacent squared over, and I'll divide by the negative 2 adjacent adjacent, and I'll have cosine by itself, okay? So you get a formula, same formula, but in terms of the angle, so it looks like this, okay? So it's cosine of theta equals. So your formula is cosine of theta is equal to parentheses. Now I say parentheses, you really have to be careful because these have to be, oh wait a minute, where's a big dark pen? I want, where's my big dark pen? You have to have, if you don't have these, if you don't have the parentheses in your calculator, it's not going to work, okay? So it's going to be my adjacent squared plus my other adjacent squared minus my opposite squared. Close the parentheses divided by parentheses 2 times my adjacent times my other adjacent, okay? In close parentheses, okay? So all this formula is, is reworked the original but in terms of cosine, okay? Now, of course, you'll also then need to, because it's cosine of theta, take the cosine inverse. So the second step would be to take the cosine inverse of that answer. All right, so let's see if you guys can figure this one out. We want to find angle R, right? which would make my 3.1 my adjacent, right? And 
the 4.5, the other adjacent, so here's my adjacent, my other adjacent, my opposite. So see if you can set that up and then I'll do it with you, okay? Don't forget the parentheses. Anybody got an answer yet? What'd you get, Lauren? Okay, just set up the equation. Okay, so I'm going to set up the equation. I'm going to have my cosine of r equals parentheses 3.1 squared plus 4.5 squared. Subtract 6.2 squared divided by 2 times 3.1 times 4.5, okay, parentheses, you have to do it, 3.1 squared plus 4.5 squared, subtract 6.2 squared, parentheses, divided by parentheses, 2 times 3.1 times 4.5, I get a decimal, I kind of thought so, right? Yes, Ellie? What did I do? Why is the answer negative? Oh, such a good question. Honestly, can I answer that after Thanksgiving? Mm -hmm. Do you remember the unit circle? Did we ever get to the unit circle? Yeah. Okay, and the unit circle, I don't know if you remember the unit circle, but in the unit circle, once you get past and over to quadrant two, mm -hmm. you have negative values in quadrant two. A cosine turns out to be the x value, and if you're negative two, any cosine value is a negative value. Okay, now that's an awful lot, but we're going to look at it after Thanksgiving, okay? Does that semi explain why it's negative? Yeah. Okay, good. It's a really good question. Nobody ever asks these questions. I'm delighted you did. Thank you. So I got about 107.9. So angle R is about 107.9. So any obtuse angle, Ellie, will always be have a cosine of a negative value because it puts it in quadrant two, doesn't it? Okay, mm -hmm. now, once I have the 107.9, I have two choices. I could, and some kids do this, I could find the other angle with the log cosine. I could do this again. I could. Or you have a pair of opposites now, which means you could use lost signs. It doesn't matter. So I, I prefer the lost signs. It's shorter. Okay, you with me on lost signs because I have my opposites now. Or you could use this formula again, but I'm going to use lost signs. It's just a smaller, easier form, right? So I'll set up the sine of 107.9 over 6.2 equals the sine of angle S over. 3.1. We'll multiply it up. Ellie, that was such a cool question. Thank you. Nobody asked those questions. Yes. 6.2. Oops, I'm multiplying the wrong way. Oops, my bad. I got carried away by Ellie's question. Dang. All right, so do this all over again. 3.1 sine of 107.9 divided by 6.2. I get a decimal, right? And then I do the sine inverse of that answer. And I get an answer of, and I can even explain why the decimal is positive on that one. And I get a 28.4. So angle S is 28.4. Point four. Of course, the last angle should be easy, right? 180. So angle um, must be Q, right? Is equal to 180 minus the sum of 107.9 plus your 28.4. Okay. 109 minus the sum of 107.9 plus 28. 
four, and I get an answer of about 43.7. What do you think? Not too bad? Okay. All right, ready to turn the page? Hey, okay, turn the page. Okay, example four. So there's a triangle within a triangle within a triangle, right? There's three triangles, there really are. And we want to find AD. We want to find AD. Let's just call that X, okay? So what do you think? Give me a strategy, smart kids. Um, yeah. So I want to find x, but I have to work my way toward it. How's that for him? Okay. So if I find angle B, if I find angle B, then I can get to x. Does right. that make sense? Right. Yeah. Okay. So if we get angle B, and we have to go angle B from the, the lot, the, the one we just learned, right? So let's go for angle B first, all right? So angle B, law of cosines, because I have side, 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 because that side is six, right? So I've got side, 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 law of cosines. Cosine of B equals parentheses, adjacent, adjacent, opposite. So 5 squared plus 6 squared minus 7 squared all over parentheses 2 times 5 times 6, right? Parentheses 5 squared plus 6 squared 7 squared parentheses divided by 2 times, and I get a decimal, which I thought I would, and I'm going to go cosine inverse of that answer, about 78.5. Okay, let me put that in there. Okay. So now if I just look at the skinny triangle, I have side, angle, side, right? Which is still the lot of cosines, right? Solid. So we can use the lot of cosines, but we'll use the other formula, the first formula. Let me highlight the triangle we're looking at. So in that triangle I have side, angle, side, so I will set up my lot of cosines. Opposite squared equals adjacent squared plus the other adjacent squared minus 2 times the adjacent times the other adjacent cosine of the angle 78.5 right and I'm gonna square root whatever answer I get and let's figure out what that is 5 squared plus 2 squared minus 2 times 5 times 2 cosine of 78.2, 24.9. And I'm going to square root that. Square root that answer. Pretty close to 5. I got 4.99. So it's actually a five. You get okay. Five x equals five. Interesting. It's isosceles. Hmm. Okay. Didn't see that. Thanks, Kai. All right now, area of, the tri of this rectangle or quadrilateral. Okay. So we know that we have an area formula for a triangle. Okay. We know a triangle is equal to one half our adjacent times our other adjacent times the sine of the angle. Okay, remember that formula? We learned that a couple of days ago, right? And that works for any triangle. It doesn't have to be a right triangle. So first of all, what we need to do is we need some triangles, right? 
Um, I know where I want to cut it. Where do you want to cut it? But I know exactly where I want to cut it. Hopefully, you guys are going to cut the same way. Right um, there. Yeah. Does that seem just obvious? Right yeah. there? Because then you've got your side angle side up there. You can get this triangle really easily. Ever get that? Cut it here, and you're asking for some work. Uh huh. Yeah, let's cut it there. Okay. Yeah, you, yeah, it will work, but you're asking for a lot of extra work, okay? It, it's not wrong, but whew, man, I don't want to work that hard, Vincent, okay? Please don't make me work that hard. It will work, but it would take a lot of work by me. So, real quick, triangle one, that's easy. Triangle one, I already got it, one half. 9 times 13 sine of 68. Vincent, if I get bored, which I rarely do, because um, I'm a busy guy, I might do it the other way, but man, it's going to be a lot of work. Oh. Times 9, it should be able to do it, right? Sine of 68. Okay, I get an answer of about 54.24. We'll round it, just say 54.2. Mm -hmm. Triangle 1. 54.2. Now I'm going to circle that because I want to come back to that problem, right? Because that's triangle one. Okay, triangle two. Well, I need I need my side angle side. And I don't have it. Can you just can you do side side side? Let's find this. Yes, it's not called the hypotenuse. It's totally correct. I agree. Totally agree. Let's find this. Then what? You got a side side? We'll get to the side. To get either one of these angles. Yeah, right. probably that angle right there. Good. You guys see the strategy? Yep. We're going to find this by the lot cosines. Once we get this angle, then we'll find this angle by the lot cosines again. And then we'll have our side angle side. Okay, cool. Let's do it. So let's call this, let's just call it C, because it is kind of like a hypotenuse, isn't it? So we're going to go C squared equals 13 uh, squared plus 9 squared minus 2 times 9 times 13 times the cosine of 68, OK? That's my side angle side, and that's the log cosines. Square root of whatever I got there. Okay, give me a second. 13 squared plus 9 squared minus 2 times 13 times 9 cosine 68. 162.34, but I'm going to take the square root of that, right? 12.74. Okay, let me get, let you get caught up. Okay, I'm going to put that in my figure. Okay. Um, the cosine of the side 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 is adjacent plus adjacent uh, squared minus opposite. Okay. Uh, That's fine. Yes, for the one you're getting to. Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. Um, you're ahead of me, Ty. Totally right. Okay, now it's fine. Let's call this. I hole punched it, but let's call it theta, okay? Let's call it theta right there. You okay with that? So I'm going to do what Kai suggested. I'm going to go cosine theta equals um, adjacent. That's my adjacent, 10 squared, plus my other adjacent. That's my 7 squared, minus my opposite squared. That's my 12.74 squared. Divided by parentheses 2, that's part of the formula, 2 times my 10, my adjacent times my other adjacent, 7. Okay. So I'm going to go parentheses. I'm going to go 10 squared plus 7 squared minus 12.74 squared. Close the parentheses. Divided by parentheses 2 times 10. Times seven, and I get a decimal. All right, so Ellie, that tells me the angle is going to be obtuse, doesn't it? Kind of cool. Cosine inverse of that answer. Ninety-five point four five. We'll round up ninety-five. Yeah, ninety-five 
95, uh, 95, 95.45 degrees. Okay, now, if I put that in there, 95.45, now I'm gonna go back and use that formula for triangle two. So I'm gonna go triangle two is one half adjacent, which is 10. The other adjacent, which is seven, and sine of my 95.45, okay, hold on. I'm gonna go 0.5 times 10 times seven times the sine 5.45. And I get an area of 34.84. Total area of the quadrilateral, so the quad is equal to triangle one plus triangle two, 54.2 plus my 34.84, and I get an answer about 89, pretty close to 89 in terms of I guess, whatever, centimeters squared. Okay, great. That's a long lesson, sorry you guys. But we still have plenty of time to get some stuff done, right?